So as we saw in the previous video, there's a big kind of battle or tension between selection and stochasticity, where selection would increase the frequency of advantageous alleles and push them towards fixation, but often they would actually be lost and not go to fixation. So a question that we can now ask is, when does selection or the force of selection kind of beat out the force of stochasticity? Under what conditions is selection more powerful and under what conditions is stochasticity more powerful? So first of all, let's think about change in allele frequencies. If we look at stochasticity, each generation, the change in allele frequencies is given by kind of an up or down amount of PQ um, divided by 2N. This is a result that we didn't do in this class, but if you go back and look at your biostats notes and look in the binomial section, you'll see that this is a representation of kind of the variation we expect to see under binomial conditions. And basically what this is saying is the value of P will fluctuate just randomly per generation, and the size of those fluctuations are given by this. But there's no consistent direction, right? It's in the positive or negative direction, kind of randomly over time. Now what about selection? What's the change in the value of P due to selection? Well, we have an equation for that, right? We have this equation PQ, W bar, P, W11 minus W12, plus Q, W12 minus W22. So we have that equation from before. Let's do some simplifications. Let's say the difference between the homozygote and the heterozygote is given by a selective coefficient, and the difference between the heterozygote and the lowercase a homozygote is given by that same difference. And if it's small, then w bar is approximately 1. So if we make these substitutions, s can come out in the front, then you have p plus q is 1, so you'd actually end up getting um, roughly spq as being the change due to selection. So when is selection more powerful than stochasticity? When does selection change the allele frequency in a generation more than stochasticity does? That would be when SPQ is larger than PQ over 2N. And so we can kind of simplify this. That would be when S is larger than 1 over 2N. Another way of thinking about when selection is more powerful than stochasticity would be instead of thinking about the change in allele frequency per generation, let's think about the probability of fixation. An advantageous allele, a single copy in a population, its probability of fixing was 2s. A neutral allele, one that is only prone to stochasticity when it was a single copy in a population, its probability of fixing was 1 over 2n. So under what conditions is the probability of fixing because of selection larger than just the probability of fixing due to randomness? It would be when this is true. And then we can divide to both sides and we can get this result here. So the equations aren't exactly the same. S being larger than 1 over 2n, S being larger than 1 over 4n. And some of that has to do with kind of what we've done there. But the key thing here and we see with both of these is that selection is more powerful in larger populations. So how advantageous does something need to be for selection to be more powerful than drift? Depends on the population size. The larger the population gets, the larger this denominator is, the smaller this value gets, that means the smaller the selective coefficient can be in order for selection to be more powerful than stochasticity or randomness. On the other hand, for smaller populations, when n is very small, that means the denominator is small. That means the right-hand side is larger, which means that s would have to be larger in order for selection to be more powerful than randomness or more powerful than drift. And we can look at this in a diagram. So we have our general result, 
that selection is more powerful or kind of more effective in larger populations. And one way we can visualize this is to think about a diagram like this. Let's think about all the possible values of s that a novel allele could have, with 0 being a completely neutral allele. So now we're thinking about if you have a population with a bunch of alleles, and then there's a mutation that creates a brand new allele. That new allele, if we think about its effect on fitnesses, where these fitnesses are given by these, it could be advantageous. So the value of s would be positive. right? Having a, one or two copies results in higher fitness. Or it could be negative. That would be a deleterious allele, right? where this capital A individual is actually worse than this individual. Or it could be 0. right? 0 would mean that allele has exactly the same fitness as the alternative. So we term that a neutral mutation. So when a mutation occurs, kind of the effect of that mutation on fitness could land anywhere kind of in this range. But now if we think about it, we have this result that s is effective when it's larger than 1 over 2n. Think about a small population. Well, a small population, 1 over 2n is larger. So if we think about what's that kind of range, if the value of s is less than 1 over 2n, it won't be selected. And here it will actually be selected. right? So selection will occur there. And then selection against the allele, similarly, 1 over 2n will be here. Selection will occur there. And in here, we'll have drift or stochasticity being important. On the other hand, if we have a large population, large n, this 1 over 2n value is smaller. So that means in this range where mutations could create values, instead of being that large, maybe we have something like this right, for a much larger population. That means selection is happening in this whole range. It's only in here where we would have drift. Similarly, for deleterious alleles, we would have the same thing. 1 over 2n is a much smaller value. Drift is only happening in here. Selection in this whole range will act to prevent that allele from being fixed. So if we think about what's going on here, in this range, we have drift, and then here we have positive selection, and here we have negative selection that prevents it from fixing. Whereas for our larger population, right, it's the same alleles, just a larger population, there's a much narrower region in which drift occurs, a much larger region in which we have positive selection, a much larger region in which we have negative selection. And what this means, and the interesting thing about this is, Given the same sorts of mutations arising, the same DNA, the same effect on fitness, if a population is very small, it's not going to be able to really select for alleles in this region. right? Alleles in this region, in a small population, are prone to drift. right? They might fix, but only as much as these alleles would. Whereas in a larger population, those alleles are now actually selected and are much more likely to fix. So a larger population is able to fix slightly advantageous alleles that a smaller population would not fix at any rate higher than chance. And then similarly over here, these slightly deleterious mutations in a small population are not selected against. They can fix by random chance and by drift. And then they would actually make those individuals in the future worse, right? because the whole population would have them. Whereas a larger population can effectively select against them and prevent them from fixing. And this is another reason why we worry about the population size of endangered species or wild organisms. It's not just the genetic diversity randomly being lost. 
it's that natural selection is much more effective in large populations and allows them to keep fixing advantageous alleles and prevent the buildup of these deleterious alleles, whereas in small populations, they're not nearly as good at evolving, right? They're not nearly as good at fixing slightly advantageous alleles or preventing the fixation of slightly deleterious alleles. And again, this is for individuals who are otherwise identical, same mutation rates, same effects of mutation. The size of a population ends up being a fundamental factor that determines how well it can evolve.